All right, everybody, part two of my home gym build. We're gonna start doing drywall on this wall right here and this wall here. So uh, let's get to it. Probably a good idea to make sure it's dead since I'm pulling it out of the wall. And it is. All right, so I got this first uh, piece lined up pretty well. I had to mess with the, uh, the corner a little bit to get that fit right. My pole apparently isn't perfect, uh, but that's fine now. It's lined up good with my outlet. And what I'm gonna be using to install my drywall is this rigid collated screw gun. I've used this both for subflooring as well as uh, other drywall, and it's worked pretty well. I mean, I don't think it's the, you know, it's not your top of the line collated screw gun, but it's worked all right. And I actually got this factory reconditioned. Um, so when you load it in here, you got a coarse uh, screw length adjustment here, and then you have a fine tune adjustment for depth right here and using with this you just need collated screws so you just thread this whole uh, run of screws into the gun and they just come out just screw them in one at a time it's a useful tool it makes stuff like this a lot easier I got this one reconditioned so I actually got a really good price on it it was years ago now I don't even remember what it was but let's go ahead and get this first sheet on As you can see, it makes pretty fast work of uh, most of the field screws. I was having some issues over here with the, the side because I am going a little bit of an angle just to make sure I get into the wood without getting too close to the edge of the drywall and cracking and breaking it up. And I don't know if it just maybe doesn't like uh, going on an angle. You need to be good and straight on it. So for all that stuff throughout the field, it does perfectly fine. Makes pretty quick work of it. So I'm gonna keep on going. Hopefully get the rest of this wall done tonight. kidding me still no push towards me push oh okay Ooh. what so i can design and have the tablet what and then witcher took it from me she said mom said whoever charged it got it but i had it now and he didn't <laughs> of the drywall is complete I'm going to be taping the seams and mudding over obviously the seams and all the screw holes but I'm just doing one coat because I'm gonna end up putting a panel over this to give a faux look you'll see that in a minute so I'm only doing the one coat and uh, really and truly I just don't want to have to sand it because sanding drywall mud is a pain in the butt so if I just do one coat I try to get as even as I can 
I won't have to do any sanding. If I have any really high spots, I'll sand before I put my paneling up. But hopefully I don't have to do any of that. I can just mud it once, let it dry. I'll probably have to prime the walls. I'll prime it first and then I'll put the paneling over just to make sure that this is sealed and hopefully help prevent as much moisture from getting into it as possible. Some people apparently don't like this this uh, style of tape. They prefer the regular paper style of tape, but I've used this before on seams and it's been perfectly fine for me. So I think it's easier. Stick it right on, then take it right over with the mud. So that's what I'm gonna do. Okay, as you can see guys, I got all of these, uh, these two walls complete here with the faux brick that I'm going for. I know this is a hideous color, don't worry about that. I'm gonna be painting all this stuff just black, so I'm hoping I get out of it what I'm thinking or trying to get out of it, just a faux brick look with it all just painted black. I, uh, I used a lot of sanded caulk to cover up all of my screw holes, which I countersunk every one of these, and also sanded caulk here uh, to, to try and help cover these joints. Uh, I've actually sanded, I haven't done, done these ones yet, but down here, I've actually sanded, and I know you might think it's a little odd to sand caulk, and I would agree, but it's actually worked all right on some of these, um, because just getting the caulk on, and it's hard to get it perfect, and really just try to blend these in so that they disappear. Once it's all painted black, I don't really know if the screws would have even been seen much anyways. But just to try and be safe, I, I did, I used the sanded caulk to try and cover stuff up. And yeah, once it's dry and cured uh, after a day or so, I, I've come back and tried to sand some of it. And it seems like it's worked all right. Just to try and blend it and smooth it out some to uh, hopefully reduce the appearance of these joints especially. I'm more worried about the joints than the screw holes themselves. So, but that's all done. Next thing up, I'm gonna be working on my beam here, cleaning up this beam, getting it primered because it's just gonna get painted black with everything else. And I do have some trim that I'm gonna be putting up here as well as base trim uh, once I get my floor in to cover up these gaps. I'll cover up all that stuff and everything's just gonna get painted black. And hopefully I will get the look out of it that I want. If I don't, then, well, I guess I'm just out of luck. Well, I'm gonna get going on this beam and I'll get back to you. So once again, I did not show the process of cleaning the beam because I was lazy and didn't feel like setting up my camera. But I'll tell you what I did. So I just went and I sanded it using just my sander with 80 grit sandpaper and I did have it hooked up to my vacuum to do it uh, which I would recommend because it's going to make a lot of rust dust and I didn't want that just flying all over the place so I hooked it up to the vacuum while I did it um, I also had my RZ mask on which I don't know where that's at at the moment but uh, I did that and then what I'm going to be using is this Rust-Oleum professional primer to cover it and according to this it says to get rid of all the loose uh, rust which I did with the sanding and then to clean it with soap and water and then rinse it and let it dry so I had just got finished with that had a bucket of soapy water and I just had an old t-shirt wiping that down with that I'd wipe it down with that and I'd rinse it off with clean water and then just dried it off with the towel so now it's looking pretty nice. I'm gonna let it sit for a little while just to make sure it's dry. And then I'm gonna be going over it with that primer. I, I don't know if I'll show that or not, but yeah, I'm gonna primer that. And then once that's done, I may primer some of these walls cause I kinda wanna see how some of these joints look with the coat of paint on them before I actually do the paint. 
So I might try primer over some of this stuff just to see how it looks first. Uh, but then after that, I should be able to get to paint. So, yeah, I'm gonna get to that. The beam is done getting primed. I used the, like I said, I showed you before, the Rust-Oleum Professional Primer. I did a couple coats of that. I also used it for on a few of these seams. I just had some leftover, so I used it on some of the seams just to see how it would look with a coat of paint, obviously in this case primer, on it. They look okay. Uh, you can still see the joints between these panels. I think it looks good enough. It is what it is. It may look a little bit better once I have it all black, but we'll see. As of right now, it looks fine. It's a gym. It's not having to look immaculate but the last thing i need to do before getting painted uh getting started painting is uh i want to put up just a few pieces of trim to cover up that seam between the panels and the beam as well as up here between the panels and the just the ceiling so uh i'm gonna get going to do that and then hopefully i can get to painting here today So what I didn't show or mention with the paint was that I rolled two full coats on the walls. And while I did roll a little bit on the beam, I actually ended up spraying the second coat uh, for that bottom trim or that top trim right underneath the beam, as well as the beam itself. It just, it ended up being so much easier than rolling or trying to brush that on. And that ended up looking really nice and smooth. Uh, so the beam looks great. And just in a lot of these tight corners was just way easier to spray rather than trying to brush or roll all that stuff. So. That's what I did there, and I think it turned out great. It's all smooth and nice. I love these three quarter inch horse stall mats, and I've been wanting to get these for a long time uh, on my floor down here for my gym. And they cut super easy. All you need is a razor knife. And just to make sure I got a good straight line, I obviously use my T-square here to get my initial cut. Just do a few cuts with that. And then once you, once you have your cut, it's real easy to keep going and cut through it. Like you can see here, I folded it up so that the tension is holding and pulling the cut line open. And then as you cut, it's just gonna keep on pulling it more and more open and just, you get through it no problem. It goes really quick. So as you can see, I ended up moving my platform from where it originally was. In so doing, I then had two foot sections on these two sides that would have been lower would have been, uh, what, an inch and a half lower than my platform, which would have just been weird and probably made those areas unusable. So what I opted to do was raise both sides up to the same height. So I just needed two layers of some under platform, whatever material, and uh, then the rubber on top. So what I went with was just MDF. So with the MDF, all I did was drill and countersink uh, like inch and a quarter length drywall screws to hold the layers together. And what I actually did was overlap the layers at this corner so that I could lock in both sides of this L shape together. So the entire thing around the platform is like locked together as one piece. And then these stall mats just get drilled down with uh, drywall screws as well to hold them in place. It's actually been quite a while since I talked about anything that I've done or uh, am doing. 
Um, you saw some of the footage, but I didn't talk about any of the, the paint, everything since I've got all this done. I'm really liking the black. My wife really likes it. Uh, it. It hides stuff way more than I was actually expecting it to. The screw holes and all that stuff has disappeared, it's gone. I mean, you can find them if you're really looking for them, but other than that, it's just, it's gone. You can still see the seams um, in the wall for the panels, but really it's not that bad. It actually hit it more than I was expecting. Plus, I find if I just don't look at them, then I won't see them, so that works. One thing I didn't show was uh, moving my whole platform here. So I was up against this wall here before, and this is just a three layer, you know, three quarter inch plywood on top OSB underneath panels underneath. I did not have room to spin this thing. So I had to take the plywood and the rubber mats off and then just slid the whole platform this way and then up against this wall. And then I put the plywood and rubber back on just oriented this way now. That was the easiest way to get it over here. And I just obviously moved my rack. Same thing, I had these uh, two buys up here before. Just mount those to the wall and then this to that. That just gives me, I wanted that before, it just gave me a little bit more space there behind the rack. Um, I was finally able to uh, install this plate holder. Eventually I'd like to get some better plates, maybe some bumpers, but basically the same setup here, just two by fours fasten two uh, studs in the wall and then this fasten the two buys so I'm gonna get that mirror up there I got this other big mirror here that will eventually go up once we get plywood on these walls that might still be a minute so just waiting for plywood prices to come down uh, yep I got this uh, nice dumbbell rack from Titan we're slowly uh, upping you know adding to our dumbbell collection here honestly this stuff Walmart they're like it's like a buck a pound it's one of the best prices I've seen and honestly and truly I don't think they're any worse quality than uh, just about any other rubber hex dumbbell out there I don't really know that for sure but I'm I'm assuming as much I did have so I had some leftover of this style uh, the new stuff didn't have anything the new stuff is just per completely flat rubber this was uh, this stuff I had left over from uh, when I did these. I had like a four by four section of that stuff left over, so I just cut it in half, and I have two by four, two two by four sections of that. This stuff is all, then I got the three quarter inch rubber mats everywhere else in the room, which I love. I've been wanting this for years, and I finally got it. It's, unfortunately, it's quite a bit more expensive than it once was, but I wanted to get it before it went up even higher in price. But this stuff is, I love this. I'm loving the whole setup here. I added some extra space over there. It just gives us more room around the rack here than when I had it oriented the other way. My wife questioned it a little bit, but I was really hoping that this would be better. And uh, so far I think it is, but I was a little worried there for a second. Um, I was worried I'd do all this and then she wouldn't like it and then I'd be in trouble. But so far it seems to be working and I think she likes it. These flanges should be, I guess, on the inside. I don't know if it's just really aesthetically, that's the proper way to do it, but really doesn't matter. I just needed to do it this way, because otherwise, screwing it into my studs, I wouldn't have been able to fit this bar here, and that's a big reason I wanted these, is to get this on here. Um, this it wouldn't have mattered, uh, but this, yeah, to get it in. So, that and, if you're wondering why the heck I'm putting it behind this thing, it's because this may eventually be replaced. So I'm not too concerned with this being behind here at the moment um, because this may get replaced by another piece of machinery that will go on the other side of the room. So this will just go away altogether. So uh, yeah, I'm not too concerned about it being in behind this at the moment. So the next thing on my agenda was the door. Now, I suck at installing doors, and it kind of took me forever, so I didn't want to show that for fear of just being completely humiliated because it would have taken me forever, which it kind of did take me a little while. But I got it installed. It's 
the doors, I took the door off to paint, but I got the jam uh, painted. I just have to go and uh, throw the door back on there, then get a, uh, then get the door handle and stuff on there, which I have sitting right over here, and I'm gonna do that next. So let me go get that door, and I'll get the door put back on the hinges, and hopefully get that, uh, get it all installed. Let's do it. Nice. All right. All right, the door is in. The door looks good. Now I just have to, I'm gonna be going ahead and installing this doorknob here. Now one thing I'm gonna to have to do, I should have already done it and I forgot to, is because I'm doing full three quarter inch uh, casing trim around the door, this, the standard uh, strike plate that comes with these doors doesn't extend out far enough. So actually when you go to close the door, the latch will end up hitting your trim before it hits the strike plate. So I had to do this on my upstairs uh, doors, on all my doors upstairs because I had the same thing. I had full three quarter inch uh, trim. So you get basically, I just have to go, I can go on Amazon and I'll get a uh, strike plate that actually is quite a bit longer. So it'll extend all the way past the the casing, the trim, so that it the latch won't be hitting it and just beating up the trim on that part there. So, but other than that, I'll, I'll put it on uh, for now, just because I don't have another one at the moment. So I'll put that on now. And uh, yeah, I need to get that ordered here soon. And I'm gonna go ahead and install the rest of this door now. Okay, so one of the last things I have to do, uh, obviously for this, uh, is uh, my door casing, my door trim here, and obviously my uh, finish up my baseboards down here. But let's go ahead and get this door trim on here and finally get this sucker trimmed out and finished. All right, so I've got a shim down here on the floor just to hold this trim up off. I planned on having it up off the floor just a little bit, about as much as my casing is, or my door jam. That gives me, that should give me my quarter inch clearance uh, once I get my top trim on. And I'm gonna use this shim here because I got a quarter inch thickness on the back side to basically just be my guide to get me my quarter inch reveal here on my door jam. So that should give me a good, consistent, even reveal all the way up. So I just need to fill up these holes and touch up a few spots in paint and then this is finally done. I think it looks great. Now we've only got one more thing left to do that this room desperately needs uh, before the end of this video. Uh, so let's get right into that. Here we go. I got myself an 18 inch wall fan from uh, Menards. I didn't have it uh, in store. For some reason you could only get them uh, online. I don't know if they're going discontinuing them or what, but I had to order this online, but it's an 18 inch wall mount fan. Plan on putting it up here on the wall. It gets pretty toasty and sweaty in here, so I'm hoping this guy really uh, helps to alleviate that.
Hey, I think I'm gonna call it there, guys. The video's already too long. My wife and I have actually been using this setup for a little while now, and we're both really into it. We're really enjoying the space. It's so much more user-friendly and just uh, all around a much better flow. Obviously, I'm gonna have to do another video to finish off these walls, as well as a few other uh, implements I would like to add when also uh, finishing these walls. I'll put a link in the description for uh, some of these things that I, I put in here, if anybody's interested, anybody cares. One other thing, I, I also got this for my wife, a uh, BC Strength thruster pad, if you're into hip thrusts. My wife's really digging that. That's uh, bcstrength.com. But uh, I think that's about all for today, guys. Hopefully you got something good out of this, something you can maybe use for your own home gym. If you like this, if you got something out of it, please like, subscribe, click the bell thing, whatever. Have a great time, guys. God bless. See you next time.